If you've been to a motorcycle race over the past 40 years, there is a very good chance you have seen this man. Keith McCarty has been one of the most visible and successful men in the sport of motorcycle racing almost immediately after deciding this as his career path. My love for motorcycles really started as a young kid. My uncle took me riding with his son and, you know, just out to the desert and, uh, you know, it was pretty magical. You know, as you can imagine, a young kid getting on the bike first time, it's fun and you never forget that. That career was sparked at an early age by Keith's uncle. Uncle Frank, now 95, remembers a young boy that loved to ride, but also was fascinated by the mechanics of a motorcycle. I had bought this uh, flat track racing by the 45 cubic inch Indian. And uh, I bought it in pieces and Keith was over there. And he just sat there like he was hypnotized, watching every little thing I did. So one of the times that he was there, he comes up to me and he says, you know, Uncle Frank, he says, when I get big, I want to be just like you and work on motorcycles. I think he's a natural. I can't take all that credit. I just maybe got to from kicking him in the butt a little bit, that's all. <laughs> Despite a job resume lacking any substantial experience, the self-taught motorcycle mechanic's work ethic and determination soon landed him a job at Suzuki in 1973. Within two years, he was a mechanic for Tony DiStefano, winning the 1975 and 1976 250cc AMA National Motocross Championships. Following those two back-to-back -back titles, Keith made a career move that not only would shape his legacy, but would help make Yamaha into a racing powerhouse in the United States. A young rider named Bob Hanna was looking for a new mechanic, and although he had his choice of three talented wrenches, his decision was an easy one. They said, you can have anybody you want. And I knew McCarty from the year before. I knew already McCarty had big expectations for himself. I mean, he's not just a guy that works on a bike. And McCarty at the time too, when they did interview him, he thought I was the guy that could win three championships in one year. So we both really wanted to do the deal. I said, it's him. If you can get him, let's get him. And Yamaha just went and got him. And it was a match made in heaven, really. Can you imagine trying to manage a rider like Bob Hanna? I mean, I mean, Bob, I mean, he's just, he's from the desert. He's this wild child kid and all that. But Keith was able to channel him, get him to focus. I guess you, it's kind of like a cheerleader, uh, possibly like going to church and talking to your pastor and get some, some, some spiritual guidance. And also to get the bike set up to where the athlete can perform at the maximum level. I don't think it dawned on me that how special it was, you know, I mean, we played hard together, you know, rough kind of thing where everything was real physical all the time, just I can beat you at this and, you know, macho stuff, right? And so I don't think we really realized what we were actually accomplishing. You know, I don't think really it dawned on me till much later that, you know, these records that we did, the number of wins and the consecutive wins and things like that, that they stood for a very long time after, after we were done. The two were unbeatable, winning the AMA Supercross Championship three consecutive years, along with a pair of 250cc motocross titles. That work ethic continued to fuel the competitive fires for McCarty. Throughout his tenure at Yamaha, he rose through the ranks to ultimately become responsible for all of the brand's U.S. racing activities. Today, he oversees 15 racing teams for Yamaha. You think about the years that he's put in. Um, and, and the determination year after year, win or lose, to keep pushing the sport forward. And I think Keith is really a visionary on where he wanted the sport to go. He is an engineer at heart. And I've watched him just this year. We have, we've had the new R1. I've seen him on his hands and knees, turning wrenches, making the bike be a championship bike. And um, that's unique to anybody that's a team manager but that's Keith. Although fiercely loyal to Yamaha, Keith has also been not only critical to the growth of motorcycle racing in America, but also to its survival. After the recession, uh, and the decline in retail sales, all companies in all industries made some tough decisions. But instead of just reducing expense, Keith put a plan together uh, based on satellite teams, based on reinforcing our race efforts as money would allow, and not single-handedly, but working uh, within the industry, and again, globally, 
uh, has truly been one of the key individuals in keeping road racing alive in the United States. I don't like to quit, and uh, there were some big things that I was asked to do during that period. And uh, one of them was to stop racing, stop road racing in particular. And you know, every company had a choice at that time. And while we had to scale it down a little bit, we didn't stop doing anything that we were doing. After 40 years in the sport, don't count on McCarty riding into the sunset anytime soon. His racing to-do list is still very much full and always focused on the future. The goals, I think my goals going forward, at least through the end of the career, have to be about people, developing people, you know. Um, you know, Yamaha's got a legacy in the United States to, to support and, uh, you know, it's really, I hope that I can leave Yamaha in a better place than when I got here. I think Keith McCarty belongs in the Hall of Fame because he has had so many successful touch points in motorcycle racing in America, whether it's uh, motocross and supercross, to all the titles they've won recently in road racing and even I think it's great the fact that this year for the first time ever all three members of Team USA that were selected for the Motocross of Nations those were all blue bikes and I think that Keith indirectly and directly had a hand in the success of the brand and all those riders. Keith McCarty's a, a motorcycle man through and through he's the ultimate industry man and uh, you know he makes you feel good about the investment you've made with your own time and and life and getting into motorcycle racing. You look at a guy like that and you think, if I'm his age and I'm still having that much fun, I chose the right path. Despite all the wins and championships, Keith McCarty, the self-taught mechanic, now boss of the Blue Crew, remains a humble man whose work ethic, focus, and determination to win has just made him the latest addition to the AMA Hall of Fame. I don't like to settle. You know, I'm not a guy for mediocrity. I'm, I've been very lucky to be surrounded by guys way smarter than me. I think, um, you know, I owe what I have to everybody that I've worked around with, you know. They're the ones that really taught me. I've had the best. A lot of people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for MBAs. I got one where they paid me. So I think I've been going to school for 40 years and, you know, the education is still not over. I learn every single day from every guy that I work with. and. Um, you know, that's very special for me. In honor of his instrumental role launching many Hall of Fame careers and his keen ability to marshal AMA championships in every major motorcycle racing discipline, the AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame proudly welcomes Keith McCarty.